Hey, Nathan, do you want to bargain on a new or used car? Yeah, right now is a bear market. <laughs> <laughs> well, in this video, we're going to give you potentially good news because uh, we've got the top 10 slowest selling used cars and new cars. That is correct. And keep in mind that this list does come from our friends at IC Cars. Yep. And we have had an opportunity to drive every single one of these cars on this list. So before uh, we get into this list, just think about what car you would buy on this list. Ah. that you could recommend uh, to our viewers uh, because, look, a lot of these cars have been sitting, oh, in the case of a new selling car, the number one car, mm -hmm. sits on the lot, get this, 128 days. Dude, Which is insane. Yeah, 128 days. So if you want to get, like, this car at a bargain, I bet you could do it because I'm sure dealers are willing to deal. But before we get to that car, let's go and talk about the top 10 slowest selling used cars and as always we'll start with number 10. That's right and it's the Buick Enclave which has an average day, average days on market of 64.3. On dealer lot. On dealer lot on market. Well it says on uh, market average, yeah, yeah it's on, the same the thing. Same thing they really. sit on the market. Yeah uh, average price is $32,075. The Enclave is essentially a crossover that's Kind of generic, but very luxurious, actually, for what it is and for that price, actually, isn't too bad. Now, number nine, I think I would buy because these are really good cars, but it's a really old car. It's the, of course, uh, Chrysler 300. Mm -hmm. uh, average time, um, 64.7 days on market or on lot, uh, with an average price of $25,021. I think that's a bargain, dude. It's not bad. Uh, we've proven that uh, cars on this platform are actually pretty damn good. And also, this is a vehicle that's going away. Yeah. So uh, if you see a recently used one, uh, it might be something worth getting if you really want a sedan because there aren't many left. Number eight is a surprise. Uh, it's a Chevy Blazer, dude. It's not a surprise to me. No? How no. come? I, it's a very popular car. I call it the B Laser. And the reason why is because it's nothing like a Blazer. Essentially, it's a nice crossover that uh, we've reviewed several times. It cannot go off-road. It has a decent all-wheel drive system, and it's actually got a very nice interior and a decent powertrain, but all in all, it's really not made for off-roading at all. Average uh, days on the lot or on market is... 65.9. Yes, and it starts Th at 31644 It's the average price. Uh, by the way, uh, there's a front-wheel drive version. There's an all-wheel drive version couple different engines, so keep an eye out for that. You know, this could be like a little warning shot across Chevy's bow because once upon a time, the Blazer competed with the Bronco, and you will not find a Bronco on any of these two lists. No, despite <laughs> the fact that they've been, they're really expensive. Uh, but so, so, the next one... So I'm saying, so maybe Chevy should have built a more... Oh yeah, they know they, know they made a mistake, but they made, they've been making a lot of mistakes recently. So, but let's move on to number seven, which is the Land Rover Range Rover at, uh, wow, 68.4 average days on market or on the lot, and the pricing average is $75,060. It's funny, you know, um, a couple weeks ago we did a video, the fastest selling cars, mm -hmm. and one of the cars on, on that list was also uh, the Land Rover Range Rover. So it's one of the fastest selling new cars, but one of the, the slowest selling. selling Used cars. Why do you think that is, Nathan? <laughs> it has a reputation. Uh, it's, it's First of all, a lot of bespoke components on the vehicle. As such, it's very expensive to maintain, and some of those components can go bad, and we've actually sampled some of that in the past. It's a shame because they're really cool, I think. Oh, but... I, I love them, but it's, it's, you know, it's, it's certainly a vehicle for the stout of heart with a mechanic in their pocket. Yeah, or two. Um, the next one though, <laughs> really... Oh, by the way, 68.4 days, average price 75,000, if I didn't say it. Maybe I said yep, it right. I did say that. But Sorry, that's right. cool, we'll continue with the next one on the list, which I wasn't expecting, and that's the Tesla Model X. Mm. Yeah, 71.4 average days on market, not so much dealerships, because how many dealerships, right? Um, and uh, $70,835. So, um, a little bit of a surprise, I thought the Model X would be a hotter seller on the used market. Yeah, you know, uh, first of all, um, long in the tooth. Yeah. Uh, I, I think uh, uh, nobody liked the Falcon wing doors, oh, except, oh, ah! except for Mr. Musk. Uh, they, they, they're cool when they work. Yeah, and we had one, and the problem with it is it's kind of big and heavy and cumbersome, and um, it's just kind of unwieldy as a as a. And then you can get it, I think, with a third row, if I remember right. Yeah, but it's, it's not it's very. A, it's a dinky third it's a, row. It's a, and right now people want like like suburban size. 
three rows, and, and this one just kind of is an odd ball out. Y yes, actually, it's funny because the reason we got it was we wanted to test what it would be like to tow with an electric vehicle. Yeah, that didn't go well. the only thing that we could tow with at the time. <laughs> and actually, there was, it was also the only time that we took a Tesla off-road because it had air suspension, so we figured that and that didn't go well either. That didn't go well either. All right. Uh, another vehicle that you really shouldn't take off-road is <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Cadillac XT4. Average days on market, 71.9 with a, really? 31,650 average price, which is a little less expensive than I thought. But then again, the X-T4 is kind of the entry level Cadillac now in terms of uh, where it sits. And yeah, I mean, the last one I drove was decent. Uh, it was yeah, it's one of those cars that's like, nothing wrong with it, but nothing extraordinarily right with it either. You know what yeah. I mean? It, it kind of just sits in this kind of weird middle ground. And I think sometimes if you want to sell cars, you have to have something, especially nowadays, right? Because we're going into this transition from internal combustion. So all kinds of cool internal combustion engine cars are coming out yeah. and all kinds of cool electric cars. If you're kind of just normal, it's kind of a hard place to be. Number four, get this. It's another Land Rover, dude. Yeah, it's the Discovery Sport, mm. which is an odd duck. And it's a, it's a vehicle a lot of people aren't familiar with, obviously, considering the fact it's on this list. Um, the Discovery Sport is, think of the Range Rover Evoque and stretch it out a little bit mm. so you can have a tiny third row seat. And that's what this is. Didn't you drive one of these? Yeah, like I drove in, it in Iceland. In Iceland. Yeah, I did. That was really cool. Uh, so basically, it was kind of uh, a Land Rover's attempt to go down market, right? So take the cachet of the Land Rover brand and bring it into a more affordable family segment. Yeah. Um, 73 days on the lot, $30,000. And they've never had a, like a great rap because once again, uh, you know, Land Rover, especially with the Range Rover, uh, and even the old Discovery, it was this kind of big, you know, car that you would take to pull your horse to the yeah. show or something. And then this thing was just kind of, um, it, was, it, was kind of it was just it, kind of bland. It's a four-cylinder turbo, fine, and yeah. it, can, it can actually do some mild off-roading. We actually have videos back when we were doing Goldmine Hill, yeah. where we took it up the hill, and it did very well. We actually looked at one. My wife was curious about them a long time ago. Look, look, um, look the, pr the problem is, like, you tell your neighbor, hey, I just got a Land Rover, and he's like, or she's oh, like, he's looking oh. for this big, and you yeah. roll up <laughs> this little old thing. Yeah, it's, but I, I didn't mind them at all. I thought that mechanically they were kind of cool, but they're just, they are a bit It was like the LR2 before yeah. the LR3, reverse same yeah. kind of deal. Yeah. Uh, the next one on the list mm. um, actually kind of surprises me because my best friend just bought a brand new one of these, and that is the Ford Mustang Mach-E, uh, 75.8 days on the lot and or market, and it comes in at $42,503. Yeah. Yeah, I think Ford is dealing on these, uh, be they new or used, uh, because, um, you know, they... Um, they want to sell electric cars, right? Ford has committed billions of dollars. Oh, they got a whole plant now that they're building, a whole world, basically, yeah. for it. Yeah, and I think, I think what we're going to see here, and you'll see this further down or up the list, uh, there's a lot of old, well, older electric cars coming. And the thing about electric cars is it's kind of like buying a phone, right? You're buying like yesterday's technology. Yeah. And so they quickly become obsolete because, um, you know, the newer stuff has better efficiency. Got faster charging. Faster charging. Yeah. And so older electric cars probably don't have, a, a, you know, much of a shelf life. I will give Ford a lot of credit though. See, technically the Mustang Mach-E and the Mach-E, I'm just gonna call it, can't say the Mustang, is um, a really good first effort for an all, for, you know, purpose, built electric vehicle, it really was their yeah, first effort. Yeah. And it was, I think, an excellent first job. Um, not everybody likes the fact it has a very stiff, sporty ride, but they call it Mustang for a reason. I mean, it's kind of, you know, handles well. But at the end of the day, really what it is, is a four-door hatchback uh, that's only got like 6.5 inches of ground clearance at best. So it's really not, you know, built for off-roading. Uh, but the next one on our list um, does have a little bit of ground clearance, but it's also not an off-roader. And that's the Buick Envision coming in at 82.3 days on the dealer lot and the average price is $29,057. I don't have much to say about that car. Uh, I don't mind the Envision either. Um, the Envision is, uh, it has a little bit of a stigma, some components that are not sourced in the United States and you know, some people have issues with well, components that well, come from I mean, Korea no, or China or whatever. The, the whole brand is around because of China. Right? Uh, and Korea. Because they were selling a lot of cars in China. Yeah. They, they killed Pontiac and kept Buick. Uh, I would have done the opposite, but we are where we are. All right, number one, another electric car, Nathan. What is that? Yeah, this kind of surprises me. It's the Tesla Model S with 88.3 days on the market and an average price of $65,216. Still a lot, 65000 I don't think I'd pay that for a Model S. For all the Teslas other than the Roadster that have been out, it's the only one we haven't owned. 
to yeah. help. Yeah, and you know, talk about long in the tooth. I know they've updated it for all you Tesla mm. fanboys, but it pretty much looks very similar. Yeah. To the to the one that came out back when we were at the Detroit Auto Show. What year was this? Just like 2010 or 2011? Something like that. Yeah. 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 So you know, Tesla, you know, had the market all to themselves for a long time, and they haven't really had to facelift or or update their product line. And I think right now uh, that is a representation of what's happening, especially in the used uh, Tesla yeah, Model S the used market. Line, yeah, yeah. Uh, and other uh, automakers are starting to really get up there now. And uh, you know, Tesla's gonna have to work harder, which is good. It's actually good for all consumers. So why don't we move on to the top 10 slowest selling new cars. Okay. Uh, some of these cars on the list are not what I expected. Some of them are. Uh, and starting with number 10, and that is the Infiniti QX80, which used to be one of their hottest sellers. And it's interesting that it's Happy gone on to hippo. this. Yeah, the, it does kind of look like a hippo. Um, average days on markets, 87.2 with an average price of $82,847. Now we just had the Armada at the office. Yeah, it's great. Which is basically the Nissan version mm -hmm. of this vehicle. Uh, and I like the old V8. I like the kind of old school buttons. Mm -hmm. I did not like the seating position. Yeah, it's an unusual position. It's kind of high. Yeah, you kind of um, sit on top of the car. And even even when you drop the seat down as much as, as yeah. far as it'll go, it doesn't quite feel like it goes far down. Uh, but it's the same issue with the Infinity. Yeah, and the, I mean, they're, you know, they're cousins. But I would buy the Armada over the Infinity. I would too, yeah. Absolutely, because there's just no reason. Don't, the Infinity is, is more luxurious inside, but that's about it. Um, also old. Well, it it is old, and there's a major update coming. They've been lightly updated recently. And there's a major update coming very soon. And number nine is another old car. And it's another Nissan product. There's a theme here. Uh, it's the Nissan Murano, and honestly, I'm surprised they still build it. Uh, it's an interesting vehicle. I'll cover that in a second. 88.7 <laughs> average days on market with a... Uh, Average price of forty five thousand one hundred thirty dollars. Yeah, I mean it's kind of empty nester SUV, right? Well, yeah, yeah. and you at want, first it was it was kind of cool and different. It was, and now it's kind of gotten old and boring. Based on the same platform that used to underpin the Maxima, and I say used to because the Maxima is gone. I didn't know they still built number eight. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of surprised <laughs> about this too, to be honest with you. I think this is their its last year. Uh, number eight is the Ford Edge. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. 93.6 days on the dealer lot or market, and that comes in at $42,746. Um, not their best car. It's okay. Remember when we went on the launch of that thing? Well, did, didn't it break down on you? Or it, it didn't break down. Oh, I thought I could have sworn someone that... Oh, no, you're thinking of... I'm, I'm talking about the Edge. You're thinking of the, uh, whatchamacallit, that big wagon thing. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 No, the Edge, the Edge is essentially a little bit bigger than the uh, Ford Escape, but really not in a major measurable way, and the Escape is simply a better vehicle that more people like to buy. All right, number seven, this is also no surprise. Mm -hmm. uh, Nissan Leaf, 95 days, $32,000. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, talk about long in the tooth. I, I think that you, you'd be hard pressed to say which is older, uh, the Nissan Leaf, and it has had facelifts, but it's still basically the same car, or the Tesla Model S, but both of them are just, gosh, time for them to ride yeah. into the sunset. Nissan made a major mistake with the Leaf uh, by not updating it enough uh, over the past 10 years that they had time to do it uh, because they were looking in the wrong directions. And as such, everybody else is starting to eat their lunch. The Leaf has the oldest architecture out there. It does not charge as fast as really anybody yeah. else in the same you know, Chattamo. segment. Chattamo, yeah, all of that is very old tech. Fortunately, Nissan has the Aria and they have a whole bunch of new electric vehicles that are gonna hit the market, but we'll cover that another time. Yep. Next vehicle on this list is not a surprise. It's the Lincoln Aviator coming in at 105.1 days on the lot. Um, $69,283. dollars yeah. uh, Lincoln Avi Aviator, not the best Lincoln out there. Nothing wrong with it per se, but it's also, no. they've had some problems actually, some reliability well, issues. Well, here's the thing, right? I mean, the only Lincoln that sells is the Navigator. Yeah, the Navigator, yeah. the Corsair sells some. Sorry, but yeah, seriously, right? Yeah. That's kind of, yeah. people want that big three-row American uh, truckster. The other ones uh, just are having a hard time finding any kind of traction. Yeah, I thought that Lincoln was on like this new turn with, with their design and everything else, and it really feels like they've kind of dropped the ball again. I don't know, uh, maybe, maybe Lincoln does have a future, but really only having one vehicle that's really stout with sales is a little, mm, no, it's not so good. Now this next one, I, I, I looked at this for a minute, I was worried about it, but then I realized something. Uh, number five, and that's the Mazda MX-5 Miata with a 107.3 uh, average days on market. Um, 
and it comes in at $34,543. Now, we love Miatas. Yes. Yeah. You know, anybody who likes to drive likes a Miata. And at first, I'm like, well, that's, that's no good. Well, keep in mind that they're kind of a limited run car, they don't build them in mass. And so having them sit on the lot for a long period of time isn't as much of a sting as it would be for so, a volume seller. Yeah, and so here's the thing about the Miata, right? They actually, this is, this is almost so rare in the automotive world. They went from having a bigger car, the uh, NC, mm -hmm. to having a smaller car, the ND. And, you know, as a big guy, mm. I, I just feel like it really hurt them because they're selling into a market where we have a lot of big people in America and if you're tall or if you're big, you just don't fit. And I understand the purity of the, we're gonna recreate the British Roadster and we're gonna keep it pure light and make it, you know. 50, 50 weight Yeah, but, but why would you not, a couple inches would be enough to actually make me wanna buy it. But I, you know, I look into the A-pillar when I drive it, yeah. I do not fit. I know you could kind of squeeze us into it, but would you wanna do a cross country trip or hell, would you wanna go up to Denver in a Miata with me? Not with you. Yeah. <laughs> With my wife, it's okay. You know, another issue is that the the, the on the passenger side, the, the way the the it's just, wells designed, you you if you're big, you can't fit your feet in there. It's, it's just it's just yeah, it's just it's, it's a little too narrow for big fat Americans. Yeah. So, uh, recommendation for your next generation, if you do build a next generation Miata, is to make it a little bit wider for us ever growing Americans and a little bit longer, and that would be awesome. And you'd probably increase your sales as well. I know I, I like the way the new one looks. I love the RF that that hard top convertible is so cool but but look look like if you don't fit you don't the fit the Toyota 86 also a small car yeah but i can fit in that but we fit in it yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. It, you know i don't think you're gonna hurt the purity of the miata mx5 by making it a tad bigger and a tad wider and you'll get a lot more sales now number four is interesting nathan um, yeah um, it's the ford mustang 108 days on the lot fifty six thousand dollars average selling price and of course that is because there's a new mustang coming that's exactly why i think that's that's why this is like this but the smart money would be to buy the current mustang because the new mustang is basically 90 percent Ish, eighty percent of well, the old Mustang. Yeah, but they, they've 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 touched almost every part on it in one way or another, according to Tommy's video. And I do recommend you go to altfl.com uh, for that. Uh, more power, better performance, altogether a sharper but vehicle. A, but a higher price tag, and more higher electronics, price. right? They yes. now have electronics. True, a lot of electronics, yeah. which I'm not thrilled with. I, I mean, you do get remote, uh, like um, not throttle. What's that called when you when you gun the engine? Uh, Oh, you mean rev matching? Yeah, no, remote revving. Oh, you get, re you get remote revving on the new one. But oh, you I didn't have, know you that. You can have your little cousin do that high yeah. in the footwell and go vroom, vroom, vroom. Yeah, yeah that's But okay. I, I gotta say, I think if you bought the current one, you can get a deal on it. So mm -hmm. I think you get it for a lot less than 56000 And I think you'd still have one hell of a car. Yes. And if you don't have to have the latest and greatest, I think this is great. Number three, top three now, Buick Envision. Which is also on the other list. Yes, <laughs> <And> I know. <laughs> it's the uh, poor Buick. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's, the Envision, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a perfectly good rental car, you know what I mean? It's just, or, or a good car to lease. It's just a very simple vehicle. Nothing wrong with it mechanically. I actually looked at this vehicle because I had to go to on, on a trip and it- and You walked past it. I really did walk past <laughs> it. But at the same time, it's not showing any major issues with huge reliability issues or anything like that. It's just, it's kind of just an everyman, simple, you know, sort of luxurious vehicle. 117 uh, days on, on, the, on the lot, 39,940,000. All right, number two, this is interesting. Yeah. Um, Land Rover Discovery Sport. Another one that's on this list. Twice. Yes, exactly. I uh, wonder why. Wow. And 119.4 <laughs> days on the uh, dealership S lot. Same reason, basically. Mm. It's, you know, 53,000 average. It's just, uh, it's just, you know, it's not the, it's not the new Defender. <laughs> Well, yeah, and that's, yeah. that is part of the thing. And at this price point, you could theoretically move over to a very base model Defender well, with you, a couple thousand more. You could just get a Land Rover Discovery at this price point that's a year old or two, you know, because yeah. they, they do depreciate rather they rapidly. They drop like a rock, yeah, exactly. they do. All right, and number one, Nathan, what is it? Yeah, it surprised me a little bit. The Jeep Cherokee, uh, 128.7 days on the dealership lot. So now we're talking about getting really, really close to half a year. And average price is $39,238. This vehicle is going to be discontinued. Um, yeah, it's yeah. It's going away. Yeah, it is going away. Um, you know, it's a fine vehicle. It may be one of those vehicles that'll be better you know, 10 years from now than when it was new, right? It's competing in a very crowded segment. 
Well, since the I mean, the RAV4 vehicle... and the CRV are just eating its lunch. Yeah, well, that, but uh, in addition, they have the Ford Bronco Sport, which in my mind is a better bargain, even though it's a little bit smaller. Um, the Jeep Cherokee just kind of, it, it sort of ran out of runway, frankly. And the Trailhawk version of it is still very good, for, especially for people who are not hardcore off-roaders but want to do some complicated off-roading. It's a great vehicle, and they drive nice on the road, and they have a nice interior. I think they're decent, but yep. yeah, unfortunately, they just couldn't maintain sales. Now, Nathan, before we get too excited, the industry target is 60 days on the lot. So on the used vehicles, they're not that far over 60 days. So it's not that dramatic, but in the new vehicles it is. So I started this video by saying, we're gonna pick the ones that we would buy if we get a bargain on them. Which would you get? Mustang. Yeah, both Doesn't of them. I would get both, the Mach-E or the Mustang. Yeah. 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 Although I, I, not the Mach-E. I would do, I'd do the, the Ford Mustang. Yeah. I would get a, you know, the good old 5.0 with the manual transmission base model, nothing on it, and yeah, I'm still a family man, but this would be my third car for the weekends. Ah, nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, used car, I get the Mach-E, because I think Maybe it's... the Miata uh, would be like my second choice. Yeah, yeah, but we're not giving them much guidance if they're looking for family vehicles, because these <laughs> are not family. Actually, I think you could get a hell of a deal on a Jeep Cherokee. Uh, and it's... Yeah, you know, uh, the Jeep, it would be up there in my top five. Yeah. Yeah, I, especially, well, once again, the uh, Trailhawk. The Trailhawk, yeah. Anyway, guys, so uh, what we want to know if you, we, if you think we've missed something on this list or what vehicle would you add to this list either way or, more importantly, which one of these would you get, you know, because you could get a bargain. Yeah, and keep in mind, uh, this came from our friends at IC Cars. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you guys for sending it to us. And as always, this is Roman. And Nathan. Sing. Sing. See you next time. Ciao. See ya.